for those of you that ha- don't know the book, um, there is a book out there, um, why I am no longer talking to white people about race. Um, both me and Halima have both read it. It's very <coughs> easy to digest. Um, it's a lot of important stuff in there, and I would thoroughly recommend you going and purchasing it. Definitely, it's definitely. like probably under a tenner. Like, how often do you buy books? Like, let, let's be honest, in this day and age, like it's well, I know you're an MA student, but like, it, it's no, different. I don't read. No, you need to believe me when I tell you I do not read. All right. Cambridge student here, guys. Like. No, 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 no. I do. I can't. I don't know how to stress to you. I even did an English degree at undergrad, and I read maybe like three books in the entire three years. Uh, Spark notes, man. Wow. <laughs> wow. And what did you end up getting? Don't worry about it. No, don't worry. Okay, okay. We'll leave it. But no, nah, like, definitely go and read that book because it has so much important information definitely. in it. And it's all relating to Britain as well, which I think like yeah. a lot of texts mm-hmm. are very um, US centered, mm-hmm. like literally like in history lessons in school, just learn about Martin Luther King, which obviously <laughs> is important. But then it's like you don't know about the history of race in Britain. You see. Sorry. 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 Go on. Go on. No, OK, well, <laughs> you know, we're talking about this whole thing about like talking to white people about race. Obviously, in this this whole time, I've been thinking about British people and I feel I feel like almost the conversation is more exhausting with white british people than it might be with like white americans because the way that that race kind of conversations about race play out in this country because at least in america and particularly in the past four years they've been racist with their chest sorry <laughs> <laughs> at least in the past four years they've been racist with their chest mm. whereas this country they really believe that they're not racist yeah. like you know what's mad right you see this thing the thing that was happening with like mega marco you know megxit and all yeah. that kind of stuff and obviously we know that she was getting the hate that she was getting because she's like a she's a black woman um there was literal illustrations of her child as a, as as a, as a primate do you know yeah. how violent that is yeah. but then people so instead for us to be talking about the nuances of race and what's going on, people, you know what the debate that they was having? Is Britain racist? Mm. That's the debate they was having. Instead of, instead of talking about like, how do we move past racism? How do we abolish it? They're talking about, is Britain racist? Mm. The people are deluded. And this is like the problem when, it's what you were linking, linking to what you were saying before when you're mm-hmm. saying once it becomes up for debate, yes. it's, it actually, it diminishes mm-hmm. the actual... Uh, the way the gravity of what we're talking about i I remember um what was it i think it was during the 2019 election which Mm -hmm. also coincided with we left the european union in january 2020 oh that is so triggering that election is so triggering oh my god it was like sometime around then i remember i was at my girlfriend's house and like loose women was just on and like i just like kind of like listened to it in the background like and i'm just kind of just like nah like mm-hmm. why why are you debating this mm-hmm, like why mm-hmm, why mm-hmm. is this like a talk topic well, like questioning exactly. do, like so like does racism exist exactly like, exactly and and that's what i mean like it just makes the con and that is what the majority a lot of british people are like and it makes already from the beginning the conversation so exhausting especially if we're talking about having these conversations with people who are not in your immediate circle so there's no kind of like vetting process you know mm-hmm. <laughs> like yeah, I don't know. Like British racism is just very, is and 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 it's so funny because like we love to point to America, you know. Mm. Like white British people love to point to America and be like, oh well, at least we're not American. My guy, who do you think America learned from? <laughs> Where do you think America came from? <laughs> uh. And it's it, that's why it's so much more insidious. Because first of all, not only do you have to convince them that yo, I'm I'm human, I'm an equal human, you have to convince them there's a problem of racism in the first place. Mm. Yeah, it is like you're saying because in America, obviously, it, it it's not better because it definitely is a lot more. It's 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 right there for you to see. It's definitely it's a lot more extreme. I would say like there is a lot more. Like for example, I don't think you could go anywhere in Britain where you would. I don't know. I, I'm a bit reluctant to say this because like the I don't know. Yeah. Where, I, I feel like it's a it's a lot more likely you would go somewhere in America where your literal life would be at, at re- stake yeah, yeah, ju- yeah. just for being there. Yeah. I feel like that, and I think, that does apply in Britain, but not yeah. to the same extent. And I think it doesn't apply in Britain because our police don't carry guns. I feel like if our mm. police carried guns, it would be a different story entirely. But I mean, at least we have yeah. that, you know. <laughs> uh, but in terms of even, but even the whole, you know, like. I, I also used to kind of say this, like, oh, it's a lot more, 
I want to correct what I just said before when I said that it's a lot more insidious. In some ways, yes, like that conversations, I guess, are 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 a lot more insidious. But um. I mean, not really, though. Like, in a lot of ways, the violence is very present and the violence is very kind of like... For example, Donald Trump will talk about um, let's build a wall to keep him out. Theresa May will actually very quietly on a quiet Tuesday morning deport 50 Jamaicans without telling anybody, you yeah. know? Like, it's 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 there. It's, it's there. The violence is there. But And it's almost like because there is this idea that it doesn't exist that acts as almost like a, a ghost layer in front of what's actually happening, right. which prevents it from actually being recognised and called out. Mm-hmm. And automatically, mm-hmm. our first debate is, <clears throat> does the racism actually exist? Instead of, how are we going to actually right. deal with exactly, it? Exactly, exactly. So, how in light of what we've just said, because we've kind of gone on a bit of a tangent there, like how do you think that relates to this idea of why you personally don't feel like you would talk to white people about race um so it's as i said as i was just saying now like it it depends if i'm in a situation where somebody is first of all even trying to debate the existence of racism luck off Mm. (laughs) i'm gone (laughs) I'm i'm not having this conversation with you um if it's and 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 i think it depends on like the extremity of the topics that are being discussed as well you know when it's um something that is kind of more questioning as I, as I keep saying like the dignity like that's because that essentially that is what racism and forms of discrimination are they're calling to question the dignity and the sanctity of somebody's human life right so if it's a situation where it's more extreme and and I feel like the dignity of my my existence is being questioned here I'm not doing it there's just no way it's not my portion whereas if it's smaller like microaggressions and stuff like that and I understand that somebody will engage in good faith then in that situation you know okay I might yeah maybe depend maybe. depend on depends on like how I'm feeling that day yeah. but having said that I do understand um the the value of these conversations especially in the context of building like a global socialist movement which is truly the only thing that will ever eradicate racism anyway yeah. um in Which, terms of building like class consciousness and class solidarity, I do think I do see the value. It has, to, but also like that certain people are certain suited for certain roles, isn't it? Mm. Like me, that's just not my disposition to be patient and gracious. Yeah, and at the end of the day, if you're the only person of color that they're actually engaging with, I think that kind of speaks for itself. Like why, yep. why, why mm-hmm. are you not like? <clears throat> Just because you live in a predominantly white area, it doesn't mm-hmm. mean that you shouldn't go and educate yourself on the rest of, mm-hmm. not even the rest of the world, like your country, your town, like literally like stop being <clears throat> so self-centered and stop mm-hmm. thinking about mm-hmm. only yourself. Like the world exists, the society exists beyond these four worlds. Like things shouldn't, just because of your, your upbringing. Your is just so restricted. Yeah. Um, and like if you if you are choosing not to engage with that, you are choosing to be ignorant. You're choosing yeah, it's to a be willful selfish. ignorance, yeah. exactly. And that's the point. The point at which somebody a white person will come to me and say to me, Oh, can you explain this, this and this? At that point that that means they've ignored like everything on social media they've ignored google the internet, they've ignored all the books and, and kind of papers and articles that are out there. It's willful. Yeah. It's willful. Why am I your first port of call? Yeah. And it's like you're happy to like it's like with them learning people's names it's like you're happy to learn like all these like game of thrones lord of rings all this like <laughs> harry potter like how everything works mm-hmm. and everything like all mm-hmm. these complicated plots yeah. yet you're not willing to actually learn yeah. real life stuff and real life that's so important mm-hmm. like literally the st- whole like just taking harry potter for example the whole story is about like literally the oppression of mudbloods and like you know yeah. what i mean it's like like muggleborn like i'm literally going into harry potter stuff now but like the whole no, thing I, is like i love harry potter yeah, we, no, could, no, we no, could do this yeah, we could no, have this convo like it's like the whole story revolves around oppression yeah you're telling me that you can like read these seven books watch these seven films which revolve around this idea of this tyrant and this yep. this idea of suppressing yeah. this race mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but not actually believe that such exists in, in real, real life, life. exactly that, like... you see the cognitive dissonance you see the privilege yeah. you see the privilege yeah and this this whole book came from someone who is saying very questionable yeah, things right yeah, now yeah, as well. yeah, yeah, yeah. so that proves if she can get it mm-hmm, you can get mm-hmm, it too mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. yeah so that sort of rounds up our discussion <laughs> on 
how much, if at all, we should talk to white people about race. I think the main conclusion we've come to is that it's completely up to you. Yep. You do you. You yep. do what you want. Yep. It doesn't have to be black or white. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, if you feel like you can't be bothered, that that's fine. Like yep. there's no obligation on there's you no obligation. at all. 